Basic quantum mechanics tells us how particles move around and form atoms and molecules. However, it's not complete enough to tell us how photons work, what virtual particles are, or how electrons and other particles are created. For that, we need our most fundamental view of the universe, quantum field theory. Field theory is complicated, but I'm going to do my best to explain the simplest field theory I can find without using maths. Let's start with a simple one-dimensional pendulum. It's just a weight on a string oscillating back and forth. Now let's simulate a similar system, just smaller. If you could take the same components and just shrink them small enough, you would get this system. Now, because it's smaller, quantum mechanics is important. Here's the same simulation, but I'm going to plot the angle of the string on the x-axis and the probability of the system on the y-axis. If this doesn't make sense, go and uh, watch my first video on quantum mechanics, which explains this in some detail. The next thing I'm going to show you is the wave function. The wave function is an underlying wave that gives us the probability wave. The probability wave is just the wave function squared. Note that there are two curves here. That's because the wave function at every point has two components. Physicists refer to these as the real component and the imaginary components, but these are just labels. If you're familiar with complex numbers, the wave function is a complex number at every point. Otherwise, just remember that the wave function has two components. Next, let's do what's called a basis decomposition. I've always shown the wave function as a curve, but we could show it as a sum over different ingredients. Let's start with this wave function, frozen in time. Now we're going to pick some ingredients and see if we can recreate the original wave function using those ingredients. If you're already familiar with linear regressions or basis decompositions, this is that. So we start off with this wave function. Then we do a, regre a regression to see how much of ingredient 1 there is. And the same again for ingredient 2 and 3. Then we can add up all of those ingredients and get pretty much exactly the same wave function that we started with. You may be wondering where these ingredients came from. Technically, you could pick whatever curves you want for this. I've picked the eigenstates of this system, which have a certain independence from one another. You can ignore that detail for now if you want. Now let's run the same simulation we saw before, but with the regression into different ingredients beside it. Just to reiterate, I've got a standard quantum mechanics simulation on the left, as before, and on the right, I've got the same simulation, but instead of showing the wave function as a line chart, I'm showing it broken down into five contributions. Because the wave function is a complex number, the five contributions are also complex numbers. I'm going to display complex numbers using this symbol. The area of the disk indicates a certain probability associated with this contribution. And the x-position is the real component, and the y-component is the imaginary component. Technically, it's an argand diagram of sorts. Here I've got a simulation of a double pendulum. There's nothing particularly complicated about it. I've got two pendulums, and they're coupled together. In real life, you could couple them together using a little string and a weight, uh, a weight between them. Now, as in the previous video, I'm going to rotate and move one of them so the system can be shown as one point on a two-dimensional screen. If this doesn't make sense, I would recommend watching my previous video where this is explained more carefully. Now for a simulation of the quantum equivalent system. As a reminder, this is what you would get if you just shrink the pendulums enough and if you could see the wave function directly. The x-axis is the angle of the first pendulum. The y-axis is the angle of the second pendulum. And the color indicates the real component of the wave function. I would like to show the simulation with a basis decomposition, as we did for the single pendulum. But we need to come up with a set of ingredients, or a basis set, for the regression. Here's how. We just take the single pendulum ingredients and we multiply them together like this remembering that the x-axes are the angles of different pendulums, so they're not the same variable. And then we can do the double pendulum simulation with a basis decomposition. As a reminder, 
we've got the double pendulum wave function plotted as a heat map on the left, and the same wave function is plotted in terms of its ingredients after a basis decomposition on the right. A brief aside, when you switch to thinking about basis states, the way that the system behaves is that the probability flows between basis states if the states are connected with a coupling, here shown with a blue flow line. Here we have a hydrogen atom in a 2p state, with spin-orbit coupling between two different 2p states. We have two basis states for the hydrogen atom, and we have coupling between them, causing probability to rock backwards and forwards between the two states. Now, with an understanding of how we can decompose quantum mechanics simulations with a basis decomposition, we can try to tackle more pendulums. Here is a simulation of eight classical coupled pendulums. I can't show the eight pendulum quantum wave function directly because it would be an eight dimensional curve. So let's move straight to a basis decomposition. So now we have to choose a basis set. Let's start with eight zeros. This looks like these single pendulum basis functions all multiplied together. Note that the zero basis state crosses the y axis zero times. The one basis state crosses the y axis one time, and so on. Now we have a large set of basis functions. I want to organize them like this, based on the sum of the numbers in the label. We have a zero state down here, and then we have all the single excited states here, and we have the double excited states here, and of course we have many more not shown, an infinite number, but they don't contribute much in the, in the simulation, even though there are an infinite number of them. With the states organized like this, you can think of them as indicating the number and the position of a new type of particle, phonons. The zero state here is the state that there are no phonons. This line of states here are the one phonon states. You have one phonon, so it can be in one location on the eight pendulums, so you have eight states in total. Then this triangle of states are the two phonon states. Two, phono two phonons can each be on one pendulum, so we have a two-dimensional arena of possible location pairs. Then we have a tetrahedron of three phonon states, and then higher dimensional collections of states not shown, indicating even more phonons. Now we can do simulations of the quantum system. If we start off in the zero state, it more or less stays in it. This is the zero phonon state. There are no phonons. There is nowhere that the phonon is. This state is nothingness. The only exception to this is a little bit of probability in the two phonon region over here. These are actually caused partly by virtual particles. Occasionally phonon pairs are created, they wander around, and then they annihilate themselves. In this system, phonons are created in pairs, which is why the single phonon states are all completely empty. There are no single virtual phonons here. Now we have the simulation starting with one phonon. It wanders around across the eight pendulums and closer inspection would show us that it's following an equation very similar to the Schrodinger equation for a single particle. Now we have the simulation for two and three phonons. These wander around following their own two and three phonon Schrodinger equations. We started from eight quantum mechanical pendulums, and we ended up with equations and charts that seem to give the number, the position, and the behavior of phonons. The standard model, our most fundamental understanding of the universe, can be seen as just basically the same idea, but with a lot more complexity. Instead of eight pendulums, we have a great number of much more complicated objects, all coupled together. Also, instead of individual oscillators, all the fundamental fields are normally assumed to be a continuum of oscillators, rather than individual, countably discrete oscillators. You can think of this as a limit of what you would get if you kept subdividing the oscillators forever, the limit as the oscillator spacings go to zero. And that is a basic introduction to quantum field theory.